I will begrudgingly acknowledge that I am in the business of trying to figure out how to live longer and live better. So when you, I mean, there's so many things when you go into this. One of the things in your book, you talk about the difference between lifespan and health span. And I think that's a great place to start, the, the, the distinction between those two things. Because what Lauren and I try to do and the information we try to gather on this show, talking to people like yourself, is we're, we're trying to not necessarily live till we're a thousand years old, but to just feel good every day that we're alive. And I, and I think that might be a decent place to start. Yes. And I would say there's a caveat to that, but, but so, which I'll come back to, but you're correct, right? So lifespan and health span are important concepts because the word longevity, most people make synonymous with lifespan. So longevity is living longer, right? But that's not really true. Uh, at least not the way I define it. It's also a function of the quality of life. And um, I think the quality of life tends to matter more the older you get. So I think when you're young, I'd put us all, certainly you guys in that category. I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly into middle age well now, but for, for someone like you who's very young, it's easy to say, look, all that matters is how good I feel today and how well I function today. And I would just push on that and say, true but if you can set yourself up to really function well in your 80s you'll do things now that might be even more demanding but will pay dividends later and so really kind of my model is focus on health span at the end of life because that's the hardest thing to get right and then everything else will flow from it you'll get the lifespan you'll get the health span today but that's the that's the ultimate goal it's kind of like delayed gratification totally so what are some pillars of, of your sort of mission? Um, well, it depends. I, I, I have so many pillars in my life. Like my whole world comes down to pillars, right? So I have like the pillars of how we intervene, right? So nutrition is kind of a pillar of, of this, uh, you know, exercise is a pillar of this. Sleep is a pillar, emotional health, you know, medications are all pillars. So that's one way that I think about it. Um, I don't know if that's, that's the direction you want to go in. Yes, let's go in that direction. Let's start with someone who maybe comes to you that feels like shit. Maybe they're 30 pounds overweight. They're working their ass off. They're probably going to bed at 11 p.m. at night. They're eating protein, but it's not great. Where do you start with a person like that? If someone's listening, where can they start? So it's important to understand I there's only a subset of people I take care of. So I take care of people who have bought into my thesis. And that's not a huge sliver of the population. So it's very important. So customer selection matters. So I'm interested in people who buy the idea that if I manipulate those five things that I just said, I have an opportunity to live a longer life and at a higher quality, physically, emotionally, and cognitively. If they buy into that argument, and I clearly do, I, my life is centered around that argument, then they'll have the patience to go really deep on how to manipulate all those things. If, however, someone comes to me and says, I have to lose 30 pounds and I have to have a six pack and I have to look good in the bathing suit in six months, I will always say to them, there are better people out there than me. That is, I'm not saying that's not a worthy goal. It might be. It's just not something I'm good at. And therefore, I will, I will sort of always shift them in that direction. So with that said, Taking the example of your of your 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 person, I would I always start by just learning as much as I can about an individual, right? So what can I learn about them biochemically? What can I learn about them, meaning looking at their blood work? What can I learn by looking at something like a DEXA scan to understand how much muscle mass they have, how much fat they have, and where that fat lies? Because some fat is harmful, really harmful, and some is just aesthetically a nuisance. You want to know the difference. I would want to understand in detail how they're training how they're eating, how they're sleeping, how they're managing stress. And I think only with that information could I begin to start to at least come up with the diagnosis of what are the you know, relative strengths at which they need to pull on each of those levers we talked about. Um, just based on what you were saying, clearly nutrition, exercise, and sleep are going to be big components. 